Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to build an EMF detector. If you like these videos and want to see more like them, please comment, like, or subscribe. And if there's anything that you do a little bit differently, please be sure to leave a comment below. Now let's jump into the parts list. And here's a list of all the parts and how I see them kind of working together. The most important part is probably going to be a battery connecting to a battery connector going into a switch. You'll notice right down here in fine writing it says please subscribe to Lloyd Summers on YouTube. I'm not sure. I think that sounds pretty important. Um, it's also then going to run into an Arduino through the VIN port. Uh, the Arduino, we're going to use a micro for the production, but we'll probably use an Arduino Uno for prototyping. It's also going to be on A1, getting information from a antenna. That antenna, I'm going to try to run it through a trim pot just so we can increase and decrease its sensitivity. Um, for the first row of numbers, we're going to, or pins, we're going to run that through an LED sequence. Something simple. You could just use 10 LEDs. It doesn't have to be one of these strips um, to be able to show them what's going on. And last but not least, on one of your um, PWM ports, we're going to connect a speaker. Uh, this, we're going to also have an on off switch, and it's going to directly reflect what information is coming in off the antenna. This will be important so you can just build this unit, leave it sitting in a room, walk away, and be able to hear in another room if it's picking up EMF. So that's really it for the parts list. Uh, next, let's go ahead and see what we have in the workshop and start putting something together. Let's start by clearing off some space, just so we have some room to work with. And now to grab some parts. Uh, let's start with the batteries. I took a look around the shop and I don't have any spare 9 volts kicking around, but I do have a bunch of these coin operated batteries, coin sized batteries. They are all 3 volt and they work pretty good and actually hold a charge for quite a while. So with that, we're going to need a couple of these. We're going to need our Arduinos. Starting here, just really any UNO clone will work just fine. For the production version, we're going to need some kind of little tiny Arduino, something smaller. In this case, we're going to go with an Arduino Pro Mini, which is of course a little clone. We're going to need some kind of segment display. I'm going to go ahead and use one of these. But you could just as easily go ahead and use traditional LEDs if that's what you want to do. For the antenna, I'm going to go ahead and cheat and just use something that's marked as black and solid. This will not be a stranded cable, it'll be solid inside so we can cut the tip off and just use that as an antenna. We're going to need a whole bunch of resistors. Uh, we're going to probably need some 100 ohm, probably um, a 3.3 M ohm as well. We'll get more into that in a bit. For buttons, we are going to need a couple of these. Which are pretty standard little switches. Here is one of those trim pots I had mentioned earlier. Nothing fancy. Now, depending on how many Pezios you have, you can use one of those. I'm going to use something a little bit bigger. We're also going to need some breadboards. I'll take one of these for prototyping. Probably one of these. Just in case, we're going to need some cables. I've got a bucket of quick little ones that I just use for prototyping. Nothing fancy. So that's pretty much it for our parts. 
If we decide later on that we want to get a little fancier, you can use just a regular piece of balsa wood to create a nice little handheld unit, or we'll print a bunch of stuff off our 3D printer and we can build something that way. All right, now let's go ahead and start our assembly. This is the little LED display. Again, you could use just regular LEDs. Um, it doesn't have to be one of these. There is our little trim pot, which we're going to use to adjust our um, antenna. And these are the little switches, just for turning things on and off. Now, these particular speakers I've used a few times, and what I found is that this part is very, very likely to fall apart. Um, if I wiggle it a couple more times, it's just going to fall off. So we're going to go ahead and put something a little bit tougher on there. Much better. Now, we're going to need a resistor for this guy. 100 ohms. Now, I'm not paid for by any of these guys, but I will say that these little resistor packs are pretty handy because they show you exactly what you're looking for, and you don't have to sit there and recalculate those resistor values each time. One of these ones. Now we're going to need the same 100s when we do the LEDs. If you're using uh, the small little LEDs, the individual ones, you'd want to use 330 um, ohms most likely. You should calculate it first, but uh, chances are that's what you're going to be looking for. 5, 10. This is a little resistor bender. It's in case you're really anal. Now, what we're going to do is connect that to the grounding. Let's connect that grounding pin over. We've got to create an antenna. Actually, I guess in the diagram we put it there. So let's be consistent. This will be our point that connects to the Arduino. And let's ground out part of this. So to do that, we need... Uh, I've only got a 1 million, so we'll take that. No idea how well this is going to work, so we'll find out. Next, let's deal with that. That's the basis of the beginning. Let's also go ahead and get our speaker mounted. We're going to mount our speaker that way. So you can see it's coming in on that, the end of that pin. So now for the fun part. We've done our basic assembly of all the basic pieces. We have our antenna, our speaker, our input for the antenna, our input for the lights. Now we just need to add an input for the speaker. And there we go. Next, we're going to get out the Arduino, um, the Uno and we'll start pushing some code and testing things out. Assuming you've installed the Arduino IDE already, uh, we should be good to just start writing code and doing checks if we want to, but for the basic checks that we're going to be doing, we actually don't really need that. We can just do that by checking the pins. 
And the reason for that is we've built this with the expectation that all of these will operate on five volts and this will operate on five volts. So we could just connect the five volt pin into the appropriate uh, unit and, and get the result that we want. Before we can do that though, we have to finish grounding everything. So we grounded the top rail and it jumps over and it ground and it goes to the bottom rail. But this grounding, we need to now connect to the Arduino. Now you can ground it to the grounding on this side or stay consistent by grounding it on this one. Next, let's go ahead and start testing some of our pins. I want to find the five volt pin on here and then I want to start testing it on here. And no luck. Maybe this module's in backwards. Let's flip it around and find out. And that was totally the problem. There we go. So that's a pretty good sign. Now we can't really test anything else until we write some code. All right. So I went ahead and did some testing and did a recording and had to throw it away because I realized some of the parts weren't working the way I had hoped. The speaker I had needs to be amplified and that would be a problem so I've switched that out with just a regular Pezio speaker. Also I couldn't get the antenna to play nicely with the trim pot when it was on one solid thing. Um, rather than try to deal with it I figured let's just separate it and then we can treat it as another input device. So that will change a little bit in how things go and it doesn't really matter a whole lot right now. I just wanted to point it out in case you're wondering why this looks slightly different from how it did a moment ago. Um, so we're going to go ahead and connect all of this up. So if we take a look at the actual physical device, you can see, come on, that some of these numbers have a little tilde sign right beside them. That little sign means that they are pulse wave modulation enabled, which means instead of being absolutely on or absolutely off, the pins can be a percentage between, specifically 0 and 255, I think. And what that means is that we can then modulate something. And to modulate something, you'll need that when you want to work with speakers, which is what we're doing, or other devices of that nature. And if we need to, we'll get into that a bit more later. It's just I wanted to mention that certain things need to go on certain pins, and that will change things a little bit. So what I'm going to do for the Uno is we'll connect the speaker first. I want to connect the speaker um, to a very specific pin. That is, we're going to take it on its middle point and connect it to pin 3. The reason why I picked pin 3 is that it leaves me 10 full pins that I can connect for this one. The last pin, um, pin 13, is a blinking light, so just be aware that you probably want that as your first light in the run. Um, it's not super important, but when the device powers up and powers off, um, it's going to make this little light flicker and give you an idea that, hey, this device is trying to load. So this part's easy and kind of repetitive. We're just going to plug in all of these lights. go and if you haven't yet I recommend you go ahead and get the Arduino IDE installed um, we're gonna need that to pump in some code and be able to make something that will function the way we want it to now obviously we're gonna switch these to hard cables when we go and make the actual little um, breadboard but for now, this is going to work just fine. Now, it's also important to mention I decided to change the way I did the code in a way that requires these all to be sequential, meaning that they have to go from pin 4 all the way to 13. And if you do it any other way, um, we have to write a lot more code. And I just wanted to keep it simple. OK. It's kind of tight, but there you go. All I've done is taken all of these and mapped them over to this. You can see that they've all gone to a grounding pin, which is right here, and that that grounding pin is mapped to this grounding pin. And then we're going to take that, which is a solid bar, and put it into ground on here. 
So now that grounding bar is being used by everybody. Um, and I've even taken the Pezio and stuck it in a way, and it will tell you with a plus and minus on the bottom um, which way to go. You obviously want the minus to sit on the railing, and you want the plus to sit on the same spot as your resistor going into your little switch. Okay. Now we got to connect some of the things we're using as sensors. We are using the um, antenna as a sensor. And it's not going to give us very accurate readings when it's in one of these breadboards because there's a piece of metal running along in here, which is going to change and act as part of a um, um, antenna. So just be aware of that. What it means is that when we go to move it to a physical device, it'll probably behave just a little bit differently. And then we're also going to connect the um, this little potometer, or however you want to call that, uh, into our Arduino. So the middle pin is the sensor. We're going to plug that into A1. One side needs to go, the max side needs to go into 5 volts. The min side needs to go into grounding. But you could also put into here if you wanted. That's perfectly fine too. So that speaker, we're not going to use because I don't want to plug in an amplifier for it. That's going to that's going to make things even more complicated. So there we go. We've now got all of those cables and wires connected. You'll notice that this one switch is not connected to anything. That's what we're going to use for the battery, and we really don't need to worry about that right now. It's a pretty simple interrupt switch, and I'll show you that when we go to do the final build. But that said, everything's now customized. Um, pins A0 and A1 should be taken up, and pins 3 all the way to 13 should be taken up. So while preparing these for YouTube, I found that the video was a lot longer than I liked. So I thought I would go ahead and just cut the video here and we'll do the second piece in the next segment. Now, if you like these videos and you want to see more like it, please comment, like, or subscribe. And as always, I hope that you continue with us and jump into the next video. Thanks and see you soon.